I'm Summer and I serve on the video team. Thanks for being with us today at Faith's Online Gathering. Before we begin, here are a few things you might want to know. The latest news and information from Faith Assembly can always be found on our website, faithnfm.com. On the website, you'll find links to our video archive and links to Faith Youth and Faith Kids. Pastor Blake and Pastor Joe are creating new content, especially for youth and parents of kids, that will help you and be a blessing to your children. If you're watching today's stream on live.faithnfm.com, there's a tab to the right you can click on and see today's sermon notes. You'll also find a tab for chat where you can interact with our service hosts. If you're watching on Facebook, say hello in the service chat. And speaking of Facebook, you can join our brand new Faith Facebook group and stay connected to all your Faith Facebook friends. Join today at facebook.com slash groups slash faith NFM. Follow us on Instagram at faith underscore assembly where we post photos of family, friends, and church life. Post a picture of where you are and who you're with as you watch today and tag us in the post. All of Faith's in-person meetings, services, and activities have been suspended until further notice. Our church offices remain open should you need assistance. You can reach us at 239-543-2700 or email info at faithnfm.com. We might be physically separated today, but we invite you to draw close to God this morning as we worship together with Faith singers and musicians. Thanks again for being here and welcome to Faith.
never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. The king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good.
Before Pastor Goss brings this morning's message, we want to let you know how to continue to give the Lord His tithes and your offerings, even when you're not physically here with us. There are several ways to do this. Option one, go to our website and click on the Give tab in the upper right corner. From there, you can give a one-time gift or set a recurring gift to give automatically at a time of your choosing. Use your debit or credit card or transfer directly from your bank using automatic check handling. Option two, text the word GIVE to 239-599-5770. You'll receive step-by-step -step instructions on what to do next. Option three, use our app on iOS or Android. Go to faithnfm.com slash app to learn more. And finally, you can always send us your contributions by mail. Send it care of Faith Assembly to 6950 Bayshore Road, North Fort Myers, Florida, 33917. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord and continued support of the ministries of faith. We're going to talk about fear and how we handle it, what we deal with, do with it, and how we get through it. Because fear is a part of life. It's always present. But it doesn't control our life because God does. We're going to look at a story that's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. It's a familiar story, I hope, to you. It's a story about David and Goliath. And so let's look at this story to see how David handled fear. First of all, there was a problem. And that's the problem. And the problem always produces fear. It always does. Whenever the giant shows up, whenever fear is present, there's always a problem. And so we begin this story with verse 4 of 1 Samuel 17. It says, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath. Now notice, it says champion. He's not just a winner. He's not just someone who's won a few battles. He's the champion of it all. He's got the belt that's there. He's got everything in place. He's the guy. Of all the Philistines, he's the one. And he comes out of the ranks. He separates himself from the army who's all behind him. And he comes out and he faces the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. That's a big guy. And he stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight, he called. I'm a Philistine champion. I'm the guy. I'm the one who represents everybody else. I'm the best we've got. But you are only the servants of Saul. Now I want you to take note of that little phrase, only the servants of Saul, because that's how Goliath saw it. We're going to come across David here in a few moments who's going to understand that they're the servants of the living God. Big difference in perception. He says, choose one man who will come down here and fight me. And if he kills me, then we'll be your slaves. But if I kill him, you'll be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today to send me a man who will fight me. And when Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified. Terrified. Deeply shaking. Trembling in their boots. They're at a point of great fear. The giant shouts, he taunts them, he calls them out, he makes fun of them. And what's their response? Terror, afraid, shaken. So the question gets to be, what's your giant today? What is the thing in your life that you find keeps calling you out? What is the thing in your life that is present that when you look at it, fear comes up? And so we have this problem that is here that has presented itself, and that problem produced fear. Secondly, the problems paralyze us. See, what happens when the fear shows up and the problems become big, we come to a place of inactivity. Now, in verse 16 of 1 Samuel chapter 17, it says, For 40 days, every morning and every evening, the Philistine champion strutted in front of the Israelite army. Forty days this is going on. Twice a day, he comes out. He struts his stuff. He calls them names. He talks about how great he is. In the meantime, we're told that David's father gets him, says, look, I need you to go take something to the other boys. My, some of my sons are in the army. I want you to bring them some food, give them some gifts. 
And so David left with the sheep with another shepherd. He sets out for, for the next day and begins to go towards where the army is and where they're fighting with the gifts that Jesse, his dad, had directed him. And he arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. So here's the Israelite army. What they're doing is they're getting dressed for war and they're going out with shouts and battle cries. Now remember, it's been 40 days. So evidently, they're getting all prepared. They're getting out. They're getting pumped up. This is the day. This is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to work. Soon the Israelites and Philistines were facing each other, the army against the army, and David left his things with the keeper of the supplies, hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. And as he's talking with them, Goliath, the champion from Gath, comes out from the Philistine ranks. And David heard him, heard the shout, the way it had happened every day, his usual taunt to the army of Israel. And as soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright, fear. Now, it's got to be the definition of insanity. You keep doing the same things over and over again, and what doesn't work, you just keep doing. It doesn't work. They get dressed. They get prepared for battle. They go out there. They know what's coming. It's happened for 40 days. They know the, what the, the giant's going to do. They know how the problem's going to present itself. They're very aware of this routine. And yet every day they're getting dressed, prepared for battle, going out. He comes out. He goes, boo, and they run away in terror, in fright. Just keep doing the same things over and over and over again. Now, you see, sometimes we have a giant in our life. Some of you right now have one. You wake up every morning and you say, today's the day I'm going to take care of this. Today's the time that I'm going to defeat this. I'm not going to give in to this. I'm going to conquer this. It's been there every day for many days in my life. Today's the day that this is going to happen. But then the giant shows up, the problem presents itself, and you run away. Just like the the Philistines did to the Israeli army. They come out, they say their thing, we back down. And so we have to understand that so many times that when we face problems, one of the things that happens to us is we don't move forward. We get paralyzed. In fact, we run backwards. We run away. We do whatever we can to cover ourselves. We do everything we can to say, okay, I'm going to deal with this. And we find all kinds of wrong ways to handle this problem, this giant that we're afraid of, trying to fix it in our own manner. But you see, there's a problem, but whenever there's a problem, there's always a promise. When you and I have a problem in life, God always has a promise for us. David is there. The people around him said, have you seen the giant, Dave? Have you seen what's going on? He comes out every day. He defies Israel. The king has offered a huge reward for anybody who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife. And the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. Now, I don't know what the king's daughters look like, but being exempt from paying taxes, boy, that's a great deal. And David said, you know, what will you get? Come again? What did you say? How's this going to happen? What's going to take place? What does someone get when they take care of this Philistine and when they end the defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? Remember Goliath? He thought he was talking to Saul's army. David knew It involved God's army. These men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, that's what the reward is. That's what you get for killing him. You get the exempt from taxes. You get to marry into the royal family. But there's a problem here. The giant stands in your way. In order to get the prize, you have to go through the problem. 
And so the problem presents itself and fear comes away. And you and I as Christians have to remember, for every problem that we ever face in life, there is always a promise that God has for us. Because there's two sides to every problem. God's given us a promise. He says, look, if you'll be faithful, if you'll keep serving me, if you'll deal with your problems in a godly manner, and you keep following me and growing in me, I've got a great reward for you. You're going to overcome and have victory, and I've got heaven waiting for you, and you can count on it. And you see, sometimes what happens in life, we, we run away from the problem. We want the prize. We want what God offers to us, but we don't want to have to go through the problem to get it. We try to get it another way, an easier way, a simpler way. But God says, look, if you want to get the problems, if you want to get my promises, you're going to have to be willing to face the giants in your life. You're going to have to be willing to deal with your fears, your hurts, your pains, your, your regrets. You're going to have to get through that. And if you will get through that, I have a great reward waiting for you. So that's a great promise. But see, the thing is, not only are there giants and problems, <laughs> there's also people. Because people add to the problem. Now, for some of you, I don't have to tell you that. You already know it. So we come to that place where we look at this and say, you know what? What's going on? And David had the same thing. Notice what happens. When David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway, he demanded. What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. And David goes, <laughs> What have I done now? I was only asking a question. You see, it probably wasn't the first time, was it? What have I done now? What have I done this time? You see, you got to understand who Eliab was. Eliab was one of the boys that when the prophets showed up to anoint the next king, he was standing in line. Eliab was the man that the prophet looked face to face in, looked him up and down, and hit the reject button. No, you're not it. Eliab was the one standing there when the prophet says, don't you have anybody else? Well, I got a little kid. Go get him. I'll wait. Eliab was there when David came in and the prophet opened the flask of oil and poured it over his head and anointed David as the next king. Eliab had had some issues with David. Anybody would. Feeling rejected. And so he gets on David's case. David, come on. What are you doing here, kid? You're just here. You're just, you know, trying to see something happen. And David just goes, what have I done now? But you see, Eliab wasn't the only one. Because David's question was reported to King Saul. And the king sent for him. And, and uh, you know, he, he said, look, don't worry about the Philistine. David told Saul, I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous. Ridiculous, Saul replied. You've got to be kidding me. There's no way you can go fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. You see, sometimes we would like to get some encouragement, but in reality what we get is criticism. In reality what happens is someone tells us we'll never make it. Someone says, well, you deserve this. Someone says, yeah, you got a big problem, but, you know, maybe you can get some help somewhere else. And the people all around David said, you can't do it. But here's the thing. All the people around David were looking at the problem. David was the only one who looked at the prize. All the people around David just saw defeat. David's the only one who sees victory. All the people around David just saw loss. David saw a win. And the people around you sometimes will make your problem bigger. They will feed your fear. And if you're not careful, there's a lot of people around you who want to feed fear. And you have to learn how to not let them control your life. And you have to learn not to give in to it. 
They'll always be there. Sometimes there'll be people related to you, like in David's case. Sometimes there'll be people you admire and respect, like King Saul. But you and I have to understand that whenever there's a problem, there's always someone around who's going to feed it, who's going to say you can't do it, who's going to discourage you, who's going to forsake you maybe. But you and I have to keep our eyes on what God has promised to us if we will be faithful. So that means that we have to persist in spite of the problem. That means that we have to keep going no matter what is happening around us and what people are saying to us. Now notice, David persisted. David persisted. People tried to talk him out of it. Saul says, look, put on my armor. Try to do it this way. Try to let me help you. Let me give you some advice. Let me tell you what to do. Do it like this. David said, I can't go in this. And in spite of what people said and in spite of what was going on around him, David never gave up. David persisted. He saw something different than everyone else. Everyone asked him, David, have you seen Goliath? And what's David's response to him? What's the price? What do I get when I defeat this Philistine? What happens if I'm victorious? Uh, you know, yeah, the problem's there, and I understand that. But I also understand there's something greater. There's a promise that God's given to me. And you see, when you want something bad enough, you'll fight for it. You won't let fear drive you away. And too many times what we see is the problem. And that causes us to give up and to walk away. When in reality what has to happen is I have to keep walking forward with God. God doesn't want to take you backwards. God doesn't want you to stand still. He wants you to have peace. There's moments you have to wait on him. But in that waiting, you're still to be faithful in what he's called you to do. And we don't give up. We don't quit. We don't run away and hide. We don't go out chanting, oh, yeah, I've got this. I've got this. I'm going to be a great person of faith. And then the giant comes, struts out, and we turn and run away. We keep persisting. We keep doing what God wants us to do. We keep moving forward. And that's what David did. And so because of that, there was something positive that came from his problem. Because if you'll deal with the problem that the enemy brings towards you, if you'll deal with the fears that he keeps cropping up around you, if you'll deal with that, there's be some very positive things that come out of it. So David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club. Wow, I'd like a little bit more in a club. And, and I rescue the lamb from its mouth. And if the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. Boy, that's pretty good. And I've done this to both lions and bears. <laughs> and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine. You know, I don't think the lions and bears were nine feet tall. I think they weighed a little bit more probably than the lions and bears. Why will I do this? He has defied the armies of the living God. Ah, David wasn't in this, never failed us. 